um, uh, that is uh, specialized courts to deal with these types of cases. I think that's very interesting, and I hope we'll talk about that uh, in his presentation tonight. Uh, so with that introduction, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Judge DeSantis. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the invitation, thank you for the university, for the, for the um, Center for Comparative and Public Law and the Criminology Evening Lecture. Um, uh, it was a pleasure, a real pleasure for me to hear, be here in Asia, especially in Hong Kong, wonderful city. And uh, I'd like to thank, special thanks for uh, caring Keller, and it was, it's a pleasure also to have you, Professor Simon Young and Pooja Kapai here. Thank you, for all, 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 uh, all the audience. Uh, thank you for being here to hear me. So uh, I know that the uh, huge uh, title, the very uh, audacious title, but uh, you know, I, I work in this field, as Professor said, about uh, financial crimes in Brazil for a long time, 25 years, working as a judge. And uh, I, I used to say a little bit uh, very fast about my career. It's important to say, to mention, I think you have an idea. Uh, so I, I better judge since uh, 2011. <laughs> And I worked for the Federal District Court, uh, court in Sao Paulo from 1991 to 2011. And from 2004 uh, to 2011, I served in a specialized money laundering court. It's not uh, money laundering only, but also financial crimes. Before, I, I was a state judge in Brazil, and uh, recently, I was a fellow at the Federal Judicial Center in Washington, D.C., 2012, where I wrote a book about money laundering through art. I make a research there. And I have several books uh, uh, about these uh, uh, titles, uh, subjects. Especially this year, I, I launched uh, I, uh, a book about church temples and financial crimes, just to show a little bit my career. So. Background of Brazil. Brazil, uh, I showed this just to show, to, to mention that so you have, as in the West, you have federal and state courts, and uh, uh, Brazil is the, one of the biggest countries in, in America after the West and Canada. So you have federal and state courts, trial courts uh, in Brazil. Uh, State appeals courts, you have every state you have one state appeals court. And federal appellate courts, you have only five. It depends on the region. It's by region. For instance, where I work now, I am a federal appellate court. Uh, it, uh, the federal appellate court in Sao Paulo has jurisdiction over Sao Paulo State and another state, Mato Grosso do Sul. But I have to mention you that Sao Paulo represents 60% of all movement of cases, federal cases in Brazil. That's why in Sao Paulo almost you have one court uh, uh, taking care of these cases. So you have, uh, uh, in fact, four, four instances in Brazil because uh, you have um, two superior courts, one in, uh, two of them, uh, of course, both of them in Brasilia, the capital, uh, Superior Court with 33 members, questions about federal law. And you have the Supreme Court with 11 justices, only deals with uh, questions of constitution. But our constitution is very big, it's a huge constitution, because of a dictatorship uh, time in the past, so everything should be on the constitution. That's why you have a broad constitution, and all, almost all the cases end uh, in, in the Supreme Court. 
Um, federal jurisdiction is determined by a list found in the Brazilian Constitution. All cases involving federal government, treaties, federal offenses like financial crimes, international drug trafficking, corruption from federal bodies, uh, every, these cases go to federal jurisdiction, and all the rest is to the state jurisdiction. So, judicial branch in Brazil is the core, of course, of fundamental rights, but you have a chronical and the institutional problems like slowness, excessive and repetitive litigation. You have extreme judicial independence, independence. Uh, we say it's a system that make and break because uh, every time it, many decisions are being reversed with another uh, interpretation of the law. So we, you have also a lack of a rational appeal system. There is a lot of abuse of defense rights through habeas corpus. Every single decision of the judge, even if the defendant is not arrested, can be challenged by habeas corpus in Brazil. And some habeas corpus is uh, it's a good uh, it's a good uh, tool for the defenders. So you have also a system that uh, high-level authorities can be judged by the Supreme Court or Superior Court, depending on the, the, the level of the authorities. This is not good. Uh, I'm saying this, I'm criticizing the system, in fact. I mean, uh, so uh, that's, that's our uh, difficulties now to deal with. The, all, all this is, is uh, being discussed a lot in Brazil. We are discussing with the, if you needed to change it to, to make it more rational system and more equal, equal, uh, equal system for all the for, for the improvement of the system. So, um, what you have done in, uh, in the latest uh, years? Simplification of civil procedures, reform of criminal procedure also. So you have ju now uh, uh, just one hearing for both prosecution and defense testimonies, and we create what is what was very important for us to combat corruption, financial crimes, money laundering was really specialized money laundering courts. And now that uh, you, we are in a phase of implementing uh, electronic lawsuits, I don't know if you have this uh, here already, but uh, it's, uh, it's going very fast. And you have courts uh, only electronically, there is no paper anymore. And I think in five years, everything will be in electronic. So it's good. So constitutional reform is try to deal with the slowness. You have binding precedents that's new in Brazil. Uh, before you, the judge should not follow the precedent of the Supreme Court. I, I was so independent that I could uh, interpret the law uh, as uh, uh, I consider the, the right way. But uh, now you have a binding precedent. You need to follow exactly what the Supreme Court decided. That's good. That's really good. You have also discretionary review. Uh, before all the cases are going to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court had to deal and to, to, to rule with the case. Now, no. Now it's different. Now only relevant case, case for nation can be decided by the Supreme Court. There was the creation also the Judicial National Council that's trying to, to set uh, unified the standards, goals for unifying proceedings, uh, the, uh, something that is no selling seized goods before the final decision. If you have seized uh, properties from the defendants in Brazil, the judge, uh, the, the, the properties you need to keep and to wait for the final decision to, to give a destination of this. Now, no. Uh, if you have the indictment, you can sell the properties 
before the final decision, but the money you get with selling of this, it, it is going to a special uh, uh, judicial account. So at the end of the case, if uh, there is a conviction of the defendant, uh, the money goes to the government, federal government, or if there is a equitable of the defendant, the money goes to the defendant. It's money. Uh, it's better than you have a, a, a property that was not in a good shape anymore. So, uh, what you had now for you to have an idea of the size of the, our problem. So we have now 70 million cases in Brazil. In 2014, the beginning of the year, we had 94 million cases in Brazil. You could last year uh, finish with 24 million cases in Brazil. Because why you have so much cases in Brazil? Because it's very easy for everyone to go to the courts. If you declare that you don't have money to pay the cost of the procedure, you you don't pay anything, you go, and your, your case is going to be uh, deal, uh, ruled by one court. It depends on the court. So what you have that is different from many countries, we have a TV coverage of the sessions of the Supreme Court. There is a special channel on TV, Open TV. You can watch the decision, and there is no secret uh, sessions for the judges. All the judges, uh, the Supreme Court, you have 11 judges, judges, justices. They are together, decide, and you watch the, uh, the arguments among them. And that's a very interesting system. You have both, both sides. It's good and not good at the same time. But I can say it's more good. It's better than to have secret sessions. Why? Secret sessions, we don't know what's going on in the background of a decision, important decision. But uh, with this, uh, uh, now this covered, TV covered uh, sessions, you can see the, the level of the discussions among the judges. And, uh, uh, but on the other hand, uh, some judges are, are, are um, how can I say, acting for the camera. This is not good at all. No, that's real. Sometimes you see that just look in the camera. You see this and that. That's uh, so. But uh, uh, after that, the, uh, he was criticized by that. By that. So the control, social control of the Supreme Court is very, very close now, uh, uh, different from the from the past. So we are doing better. Do uh, little by little, we are doing better. Although you have. It still have a, this amount of cases and try to, for instance, my, my chamber, when I arrived in 2011, I had 7,000 cases, uh, 14,000 cases to deal. Now I have less than 7,000 because uh, month by month, I try to reduce my stock of cases. Uh, so this is some um, uh, numbers, but I need to move on. So you have in Brazil 27 specialized courts in financial crimes and money laundering in 14 states, basically on the capitals, and in the federal district of Brasilia. They are created basically in 2003, but Sao Paulo, that is the financial center of Brazil, uh, was created in 2004 uh, because of the, the size of Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is uh, huge. Uh, uh, in terms of population, it's very big. Uh, you have in Sao Paulo, the state of Sao Paulo has 40 million people. And the city of Sao Paulo uh, has 12 million people, but the, the whole Sao Paulo, the, the great areas with the suburbs, we have 20 million people. So that's not so easy to deal with, uh, uh, with uh, the structure of Sao Paulo. We have created in Brazil in 2004, uh, just before the Specialized Court. The Specialized Court was created as a result, result of the annual strategy for the combat of corruption money laundering. That was a meeting, annual meeting, among 60 uh, federal bodies, 
uh, including the judiciary branch, you have a prosecution, federal and state prosecution, you have uh, the Federal Reserve uh, Central Bank, we say in Brazil, you have the IRS, IRS. you have many uh, government bodies to all together in a big table discussing what is good, what's not good to, uh, about the system, uh, about the law, about the infrastructure, everything to combat the corruption and money laundering. So, um, I mentioned some uh, laws that we, we addicted because of the ENCLA. ENCLA is the, the name of the annual strategy. That was, uh, there was the support of ENCLA. It was very important. Uh, I mentioned only some of them. For instance, Criminal Clean Record Act. So a, polit a politician cannot be elected in Brazil if he or she has been convicted by a final decision or by an, any appellate court. So if there is this, the, he cannot be a candidate. That's a law, it's a recent law. Uh, not so recent. You have it, uh, this is not from ENCLA, Administrative Misconduct Act, just to mention you that you have this in case of illicit self-enrichment. Self so what is new, completely new and being forced now is the Anti-Corruption Act uh, like you have in the West FCPA, uh, Foreign, Foreign uh, Corruption Practices Act. Uh, in Brazil we, we did that, it's a strict administrative liability for our corporations, only corporations in Brazil. And uh, for for individual, you have subjective uh, liability. That's completely new, and uh, we are starting with uh, lenience uh, programs. It's uh, very interesting. You have uh, met, uh, some companies trying to deal with the government. In a, I don't know if you are following the news of, in Brazil. You have a big, big scandal now involving our uh, oil company. It was the symbol of Brazil, Petrobras. It's uh, one of the biggest company, oil companies. So because of this, uh, you, are, you have a lot of people arrested and uh, many, many owners of uh, big con constructors and companies are arrested because of this. And it, it was, uh, you have judgments from the trial court in the first instance for the owners of company, private companies. And for the politician, you have the Supreme Court also uh, uh, dealing with uh, ruling the same case, but uh, uh, split because of the competence of the jurisdiction. Politicians uh, have the right to be judged by the Supreme Court. That's why. And there is different, uh, uh, um, how can I say, different uh, level of uh, proceeding. Now you have are read final de uh, decisions uh, uh, and uh, um, punishments of the owner of companies, but in, in the Supreme Court you have the beginning of the case because it's much more complex to, to decide the Supreme Court. You have the new law of uh, re relatively new Free Public Information Access Act access to expenses, public procurements, or bids, salaries of, everyone can, can see my salary, for instance, in Brazil. If you go to the site of the, the federal court, you can see how much I earn, and it, it's not on me. So you have uh, other uh, changes, but what I'd like to highlight here is the Money Launder Act as an uh, outcome of uh, annual strategy, and uh, we changed the uh, 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 the law, the, the previous law, uh, the first law was in, addicted in 1998, and there was a list of precedent crimes, and now we don't have the list anymore. It's very easy now. It's better to, for the accusation to, to charge uh, defendants because of this, because there is no need to do the link between the money laundering and the previous crime. It's, it's more, it's not so strong a link you need. You just 
the, the prosecutor just needed to mention that the, the funds are a result of a list uh, activity. Um, and you have also the new law, organized crime. Uh, uh, there is uh, some discussion because of definition of organized crime. You have uh, uh, several laws defining organized crime, but the last one is the, 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 the law 12,850. And you need only, uh, you need four people minimum to be considered organized crime in Brazil. Um, so national goals, you have national goals from the, the National Council of Justice. And uh, one goal is productivity. You need to rule more number of cases than we, we were assigned to, to do. So this is a little bit, you have uh, numbers about uh, people in prison, 700. In fact, it's a little bit less now, but that's it. The number are not very good in Brazil, statistics, but uh, okay. I took this from the National Council of Justice. So this I can skip to go to our subject. Uh, it's more uh, so. Uh, so uh, this is the research that I did, I did in 2012 to try to 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 understand why money laundering was uh, criminal was uh, was um, uh, designed to money laundering money laundering through art, so it was, I had uh, interesting cases involving money laundry through art, that's why I decided to write about this. And uh, I watched the, uh, uh, an auction, Chris's auction, and in June 2012, I can, I can, I can show you the little video that I did just to... Just and that takes us to the Romanino. Lot 99, showing up here for you. Lot 99. And uh, I can open the bidding for this lot with my interest at $1,800,000. At $1,800,000. Here with me. At $1,800,000. $1,900,000. $1, at $1,900,000. At $1,900,000. Two million dollars. At two million dollars, two million two hundred thousand, two million four hundred thousand, two million six hundred thousand. Still with my bidding here, two million seven hundred thousand, two million eight hundred thousand, two million nine hundred thousand, three million dollars, three million one hundred thousand. Three million two hundred thousand. Three million three hundred thousand. With Nicholas now at three million three hundred thousand dollars. Three million five hundred thousand. Three million six hundred thousand. Three million seven hundred thousand. Three million eight hundred thousand. Three million nine hundred thousand. Four million dollars. On the telephone now. At four million dollars. With Nicholas. So that's the end of the. Um, it was amazing that I asked for the bird if I could, uh, if I could, um, I know, how can I, oh my gosh, how to, can you help me, I don't know to, how to, to come back to the, uh, I forgot the, it's here, oh, yeah. which one, this, Okay, so it was amazing that I went there and then I, I talked to the board of the Christians and they said, "Ah, you can, 
you can film, there is, it's a public uh, auction, there is no problem, no problem, no problem. And, and then I was filmed, and you, you can see the people on the, on the side, they are making uh, suggestions of price, they are talking, they are, they are intermediary of some buyers. So you don't know if that's true or not, how, how can they manipulate this uh, kind of uh, auctions. It's very clear that can be manipulated. So, but uh, I was filming, you don't see, but a guy came to me and said, you cannot film. I said, no, I was saying, I was filming and say, no, but uh, uh, she said, uh, the board said, I could say, no, no, you can't, you can't. So, okay, that's it. Uh, just to show a little bit of an auction, uh, I think it's very interesting to see that uh, it's something not so, it's transparent, but it's not at all. So I had a big case involving art. You have a bank, you must know, and you too. It's a bank, uh, uh, he had a bank, uh, Santos Bank, uh, Banco Santos in Portuguese. So uh, his mansion, you can see his mansion with a lot of artworks, and he, he, he diverted money, it was a scheme, fraud scheme, financial scheme, and he bought a lot of uh, art. And uh, some of art, he fled to the West with false declaration. He declared, for instance, uh, this artwork is Hannibal Basquiat from Basquiat. It's Hannibal from Basquiat. It costs $10 million. And he declared $100 when uh, he tried to fled from Brazil. Try now. He, he fled from Brazil to, to the West, and then after that, uh, we discovered uh, I, when I did, did uh, root the decision, I, I decided to communicate all the authorities, uh, the Interpol also, and then there is a big uh, uh, work behind this and could uh, get this again. And, and it was in June, last June, it was repatriated to Brazil. Um, because of the, this one case. But this is, what, is not the case that was more impressive for me. Uh, this is his, uh, his house, it's millions of dollars, only this, this light it costs a lot of millions. And everything with art, he took this port, this a real door, of a open door of a church, old church, uh, like this in Minas Gerais State, he destroyed the church to have just the door. It's, uh, that's unbelievable. He's a crazy guy. So, uh, many artworks that was seized was uh, also I decided to put in some of them on the on, uh, on my square. It was completely new, and the people criticized me a lot, but I said, oh, what I'm doing to put in a museum did, and uh, I get a, 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 a bank, a bank could finance the, the re restoration of the artworks, these artworks. And then with the city hall, I put that, I said, okay, if he, he in the future, he is uh, acquitted, we give it back to him, but at least the people can see a little bit for free. Huh? <laughs> ah, that's why. Yeah, why? Because because of the slowness system. Uh, this this case is in 2005. Is still in the courts. So this is the case that I did like to mention. That the big drug dealer case. He he sent drug uh, drugs from from Colombia to the west by submarines. He, he, he constructed the submarines just to send it to, it's a big organized crime, it's a really dangerous guy. He made several um, surgeries, aesthetic surgery. You can see his face is, is changing along the years because he was trying to, to, to be out of the uh, American authorities. And uh, he, he stayed in Brazil, uh, is, uh, decided to live in Brazil just to money laundering. So he bought mansions, uh, uh, boats, and he had a lot of uh, uh, properties in Brazil and tried to hide from the West. The West was seeking him because he uh, committed uh, at least 300 homicides in the West. 
uh, because of uh, his drug trafficking. So he was a very dangerous guy, and I convicted him for 30 years in prison, and I decided to sell all his properties, all his everything, his watches, and, uh, but the artworks I decided to put in the Museum of Sao Paulo, the, this is a Museum of Sao Paulo, and I'm showing this because it was the, the that's why I decided to think about why you should think uh, the artwork sector as a means of money laundering. Why they needed to be careful when they deal with people uh, for the purpose of selling and buying artworks. Because it was very easy to him to buy with cash. He bought several artworks with cash and he was doing the case, he was selling the artworks to pay lawyers, to pay his uh, living expenses, and that's why it was, I said, oh, what the sector did and didn't stop, I didn't communicate anyone about a uh, uh, big drug dealer uh, could do this. And I had another case, I just mentioned this, uh, the biggest one, I had another one. Instead of selling uh, drugs through submarine, he was selling drugs to Europe with airplanes. He had a, a company, uh, air, uh, Colombian traffic also using Brazil as uh, also to to go to Europe. Uh, he had two big airplanes to go to. Uh, he made a fake fake uh, company air uh, company, and he, uh, 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 you you had the plane with the seats, but under the seat was only drugs, only a compartment for drugs. So it was also convicted, and also artworks were seized with him. So artwork and transnational crimes, uh, that's a really relatively, relatively free land, real and the clandestine arena, ecosystem apart, use of fake identification, rare documentation of the possession, all the questionable, questionable practices. Uh, I could look at the consignment documents in, for instance, in Christie's and in Sotheby's. You have the name, the address, the telephone number or email of the consigning artist, a description of the item, price, date, percentage, agreed, and their signs. But nothing about form of payments. When, when you go to Christie's or Sotheby's, they represent 90% of the movement of artworks in the world. So when you go to the site, you can see, you can pay in cash. And they say, ah, oh, you have standards, uh, strict standards to, to prevent money laundering. But in fact, uh, they accept the cash and they accept cash from third parties. Uh, so I, I was criticized and they didn't like me anymore. I cannot contact them anymore, but uh, you know, uh, uh, you needed to think this sector, what they are doing. They are self-regulated. That's a big problem because they regulate themselves. So if they are regulating themselves, they, are, they don't have a big program to combat uh, money now. And the confidentiality all the time. Everything is confidential there. You cannot know the buyer. You cannot know the, the seller. You cannot know the price of the, the artwork. Uh, they have a service, they provide services to deposit the artwork so we can discover the artwork after several years being hid, hidden inside this, this uh, auction houses. So uh, there is a lack of transparency to know uh, and to monitor. It's, it's, it's difficult to monitor uh, this kind of uh, dealings. Uh, and uh, what I discovered, for instance, uh, many people were transporting, exporting artworks in tubes. You go in a tube in an airport with uh, an artwork that values millions. So no one stops you. It's, uh, if you go with uh, luggage, you are going to be screened, everything. Uh, you, you, uh, you cannot uh, go with money, but with artworks, it's very easy. It's easy to transfer. That's why the big drug dealers are buying artworks now 
and because uh, there is no training from IRS people, from the people in the at the airports, etc. That's why it became a very attractive sector for the criminals. Uh, I was talking that these uh, that the law enforcement of this you have FATF um, recommend uh, recommendation 22 suspicious, suspicious activity reports for designated in non financial business and professions like casino real estate agency dealers in precious metals and stone lawyers no, notaries other independent, independent legal professionals and accountants but you had nothing about artworks. Instead, Brazil, we have a law. It's mandatory to, to, to make the SARS, suspicious, suspicious activity report from galleries uh, in Brazil. But you had only 74 SARS uh, yeah, all over the, the time. So just few. SARS for the size of the market in Brazil. Uh, so that's something that I could talk about uh, money laundering through art. So um, uh, that's a big uh, subject. I was uh, a lot of pretension, uh, pretentious, but uh, uh, they like to say more, but uh, you needed to review uh, insurance companies, policies, Internal, internal re revenue services also need to, to, to see this market in a different way, uh, and etc. That's uh, um, something you need to look at different. So, about football. Football, that now it's uh, very, uh, you see on the, on the, on TV, now the big scandal involving FIFA, but it, everyone knew something related to football. Uh, money laundering football. And uh, I had cases in Brazil. Uh, 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 I, I needed to say, I can mention cases as a judge since the case has finished. Okay? There is no problem in Brazil. You cannot mention cases. Uh, I need to say this ethical rule uh, if the case is still uh, in the courts, at the courts. So, we have cases involved, for instance, before this big, big scandal, you have two Colombian citizens that were arrested carrying $7,000 and more than $6,000, um, tried to, to, to leave in Brazil, not declaring the money that they were uh, carrying. Uh, 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 the money and the money belongs to they received it from Santos Football Club. It's, Santos is the club uh, the, of Pelé. You know Pelé, I guess. I guess the soccer player Pelé. So he came from Santos. That was a, a negotiation between the the two Colombian citizens and the Santos Football Club. So uh, their attempt to commit a financial crime, uh, flight, kept off flight. So that's one case. You have another case, a couple, owner of a big evangelical church, and this is a church also, uh, carrying their belongs. I, I'm mi mixing now, in fact. Carrying their belongs, even in a Bible, sum of money. They put money inside the Bible to send it to... The, they, they are owner of a big... big uh, Big church in Brazil. Eh? The, the, the church is an international church. You, you have some churches in, in in Latin America, also in the West. So they are the the the, the leaders of the this church. It's a evangelical church. They are pastors, and um, so they were discovered, and they were convicted in the West when they. They were trying to get the West with money inside the Bible and declared falsely that the money they they were they had just a little money. It was uh, almost sixty thousand uh, dollars hidden inside the Bible. And uh, in the West, they were convicted. They have a lot of property, luxury properties. They have uh, cars, international cars. Inter uh, so that's uh, one case. 
And another case involving football, and this uh, coming back to the football, was uh, um, involved the biggest club in Sao Paulo, biggest in terms of fans, and uh, there was a big scheme, scheme involving Brazilian international football clubs, and possibly money laundering from illegal activity in Russia, England, Ukraine, Georgia, Portugal, and Turkey. It's a big uh, case that uh, was, um, it's a shame, but was dismissed now because of the statute of limitations. It was a big case that started in the past and, uh, and it was uh, dismissed now. So uh, what is common in these facts? Is the good sees it were the proceeds of suspicious activities, since the negotiation itself in many cases was done with cash, always cash. Investigation and accusation of money laundering, which was illegally obtained in several countries, can be noted. The supposed use of front of or smurf partners or shell companies, assisted by specialized law firms. You had some firm that was also uh, charged with accusations of money laundering was a European law firm from Switzerland that was uh, charged with money laundering because the lawyers helped them to hide the money laundering scheme. That's what. Um, you had the seizure, the froze, and the sequestration of assets. And here, I, uh, what I'd like to highlight is the end of the, the PowerPoint. Poss possibility to seize goods from third party and burden of proof of the legal origin to have them back. That's our law. And um, I, I give some suggestions for to control and try to 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 improve the system of prevent money laundering. For instance, try to, special clubs and the federation should be uh, obliged to report suspicious activity reports uh, to the financial intelligence units of their countries. They should keep record of every contract and related mediation contracts for uh, at least five years. That's some proposals that I gave. I, I wrote a book about this. Um, foreign exchange contracts arising from remittances to individuals or legal entities, companies, related to football could be guaranteed by the contracts between the clubs and the football players. Uh, FATF members could consider having the full I identification of the investors, even when they are represented by corporations in the country. And so, in, in fact, we, when you suggest uh, proposals for this sector, we are proposing for many sectors, not only. That's why I mentioned things here, not only. Uh, I mentioned about the tax havens, what, how to deal with this and uh, other mechanisms to, to try to get information from them. Uh, uh, from my experience, I can say when Brazil asks information to tax havens, you don't get information. But when you get information through the United States, you get information because they're powerful of the United States. And they, they happen a lot to Brazil, uh, I, I need to say. That's a country that Brazil asks much more then the West asks from Brazil, and the West uh, helps much more than Brazil helps the West because of our uh, bureaucratic system uh, of the judiciary branch. Uh, church, uh, it's very easy to create a, a fake church. There is no requirement of theological or doctrinal to register or uh, minimum number of followers. It's only necessary to file one document in the National Register of Legal Entities. I don't know here uh, how it is, but uh, what I can say now, uh, I will skip a little bit the slide because of the time. What I say that 
uh, we see many people creating churches just because of the advantage of uh, uh, tax immunity. They can open very easily to open uh, bank accounts and make transaction, financial transactions, uh, 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 creating churches. Uh, there is no requirement, like I, I said before, and that's a big problem now because you have on the on the you know uh, on a hand uh, you have uh, the freedom of religion, and the, on the other hand you have the need of monitoring. Uh, the activities, illegal activities, how to deal with this. That's the bigger, uh, the more sensitive uh, situation of combating money laundering. That's the uh, big, big challenge now to, to deal with this. Um, uh, for, I can give you an example uh, that uh, I saw in my experience, like a jet. So you have the doleiros. Doleiros are the illegal exchange and the currency exchange brokers. So they are not illegal at all. They negotiate dollars on the streets. It's uh, hi hiding, hidden. It's 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 hidden from the authorities, legal authorities. But the people who use it then to send it then money abroad because uh, it's it's not possible to to track the money through them. So, uh, politicians, corrupt people, politicians, drug dealers, and all kinds of criminals, they are using the latest. In the beginning, the dollars, they were the, the, um, the owner of the bank accounts. They are the holder of the bank accounts. Um, uh, after some work of the criminal courts, they decide not to have uh, bank accounts anymore. So the bank accounts were from, they were using bank accounts from their clients. After we had more cases involving these dollars through different ways, now using clients' bank accounts, we discovered that they were using offshore companies. So the last information uh, we can say now is they are using churches to try to send money abroad. Uh, that's it. Uh, sorry if, uh, for the. That's a big uh, challenge to to try to 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 share this experience. The, I had a lot of cases in mind to to mention, but the time is the time. You need to respect. If you have any questions, please feel comfortable, free. To ask me, it would be a pleasure to answer. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you so much, Judge DeSantis. Uh, that truly was uh, an eye opening uh, presentation, uh, as the poster had advertised it to be. Um, and I think uh, you're very much at the cutting edge of new money laundering phenomenon. And in many ways in Hong Kong, I think we are still catching up and, and starting to see uh, these new developments. Um, you mentioned how F FATF did not mention uh, art and, and the same in, in our laws and regulations. Of course, our laws uh, are targeted in a very general way. So our money laundering offense uh, targets proceeds of all indictable offenses um, and the reporting, uh, the SRT, uh, obligation relates to all criminal activity. So we captured in that general way, but when it comes to actually sort of guidelines or specialized uh, regimes on uh, keeping track of your customers, etc., uh, we really stop with the financial institutions or the money changers, and that's it. We don't go beyond that. So in many ways, I think uh, we can learn a lot from from your experiences, and I think it's been really, really interesting. We have a f uh, some time to um, hear questions or comments from the audience. Yes. Such that it would, it would really cause 
cause of devaluation in the art market. I mean, what proportion of business uh, involves this sort of money laundering? And what kind of resistance do you encounter if you were to regulate it? Uh, mm. Uh, first, uh, FBI estimated this market in 1.3 billion a year of illegal movements, uh, transactions. I don't know if it is true how they get this information. You have UNESCO, UNESCO estimated in 6 million illegal transactions uh, involved. So your question is not this exactly. You, you said... Uh, well, my question is, yeah, you can go after the criminals, but... I, I think probably your biggest foe is not going to be the criminals. It's going to be people who are part of industries that are dependent on this type of interaction to, to such a fundamental degree that they, without this relationship. Now, what they, they justify the, the self-regulation, that confidential, confidentiality is, is the essential for the, for the market. Without this, they, they, you, they, you finish. Because uh, the seller never you accept that they are selling goods because his financial situation is not good anymore. That's uh, it's kind of uh, embarrassment situation. But you know, uh, it's not this. Uh, I know the uh, to to price the to evaluate uh, 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 to to give a price of artworks very difficult. And to to evaluate the real price of art also. So that's one point. The the for me the important is you needed to do something because the art sector is being used a lot for the criminals now, and they they say ah you are doing you are doing but they are, in fact they are not doing what exactly we need we need it, uh, at least. Uh, some kind of suspicious activity report to authorities because how can this foreign, this drug dealer, he bought lots of artworks, not one. The other guy I, I showed you, it was 12,000 artworks seized by the court. I don't know if what, everything was seized, but, uh, you know, and uh, no one stopped him. No one did anything. It was uh, possible because uh, his crime was discovered in a different way. But if he don't discover the, the, the crime in a different way, he continued, the sector continued to deal with criminals. And that's an a, a open door for criminals. If you want a real system to combat men louder, you need to deal with all sectors together. It's like a Christmas lightning Three. One light is is uh, is that all the lights is, is not working. You know, the, I don't know if I give a good example, but you know, uh, you need to 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 close the system to make a network to combat crime. Okay. Other questions, comments? This a woman here. Yes. Uh, can or, you uh, can you identify? Identify yourself. Uh, yeah, it's better to see who who is from, where are you from, etc. My name is um, Eileen Smith, and I research the illicit cultural property trade. So I have a lot to do with the auction houses, and yes, they are indeed dependent on this sort of trade. Um, but I would like to know what kind of um, you say that lots of the crimes that are discovered involving artworks are actually discovered in the process of another crime. So yes. For example, money laundering. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is what we discover all over the world. Um, would you say that money laundering, because they go after the proceeds of crime, would you say that money laundering is the number one um, crime that they identify that is, um, you know, that combines artworks, or would it be something related to drug trafficking or arms? Trafficking? Yes. In fact, is uh, the. Um uh, the, in fact, uh, the investigator were trying to 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 discover the previous crime, drug trafficking. But like this this drug drug uh, dealer, he committed the drug trafficking for years from Colombia to the West, and he was convicted in the West, but he fled from the West. So he was money laundering in Brazil. But Brazil, you have your, uh, he was charged only by money laundering. 
that's why we discovered them. But it was, uh, it was uh, by accident he was discovered because he was dealing all the time with cash. And the police was suspecting of him, but it was a big coincidence and very good coincidence that at the end was uh, one of the biggest uh, 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 criminal that the West was seeking. And so the uh, so you need the, uh, you know money laundering. In fact, you have money laundering as a crime to combat the, uh, the previous crimes, but how to combat this? to get all the properties. That's, money laundering is not only a crime, it is mo much more than a crime. It is the crime that, that allow, allow the investigators to gra grab all the properties of the criminal, to asphyxiate the organized crime. Can I ask you another question? Uh, let's, let's see if there's any other questions first. Who else want to go? Okay. This is very interesting. The most uh, uh, the, uh, that that was the biggest problem I had in Brazil is to defend the art uh, and to keep the art uh, in a cultural institution. Why I'm saying this? Because, uh, for instance, the West he wa uh, they want to. At the beginning, they want to share the, the artworks. Ah, uh, you want the artwork? Okay, half it, it stays here because I'm helping you. I needed to uh, reimburse all the costs that I had to this, and the half I gave to you. And I said no because they 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 invited me to go there to discuss this directly. That's something very interesting because it was the beginning of the international cooperation. Uh, in, between Brazil and the West, really. Uh, and you were face to face to deal with, not through central authorities. And they said, no, I don't accept this because the UNESCO uh, convention. I said, no, UNESCO convention said when there is a fraud, the, the state has to give back the artworks to the mm. state. And uh, it was well, uh, a week of discussion at the end, the West said, oh, I said, I, I went to the US and I, I said, you also signed the convention, the West. You signed the convention. You needed to follow the convention as we follow. Uh, no, but our internal laws is different because we, our internal law says that uh, he violated the IRS code. The IRS code says that you need to, to seize the artwork and sell and reimburse the state, etc., etc., etc. So, and at the end, they agreed with Brazil and uh, all the artwork were repatriated, but in Brazil, we had a big discussion because it was a financial crime from a banker, mm -hmm. and the creditor want, want to sell the artworks mm -hmm. to be reimbursed. And I was uh, completely against this because I know that many creditors, he went to this bank, special bank, because the rates were, were so high, completely out of the market, standard uh, rate of the market, because they are in some way helping the banker to smuggling money from the bank. To, and they knew that. And uh, I was against this, and I said, no, artwork needs to go to the public. Artwork seized by the state needs need to go to cultural institutions. And all people need to know that they were seized by the federal courts and uh, on behalf of the people. So, but this, uh, this thesis uh, was not the, 
the thesis that the Superior Court uh, accepted. The Superior Court decided that the artworks needed to be sold to reimburse the creditor. But I said to them, if you, if you, if you are going to sell these artworks, the defendant can buy again because mm. you don't know all the money he has. Mm. He could not get all his money. He can buy through third parties. And uh, that's what I try to, to convince the West. I said, no, don't, don't accept to send to Brazil without a condition of it cannot be uh, sold again or deal again. Uh, it must, it mu they must go to cultural institution. But the West said, no, that's an internal question. We are not going to, I try to force yeah, the West to do, <laughs> to be in favor of my thesis. But uh, it was not the, the thesis that, that accepted by the courts, uh, superior courts. Okay. This gentleman here. I'm not going to ask a very technical answer, rather general one. I'm a foreign correspondent, I'm a freelance correspondent here for 20 I'll give you a couple of anecdotes and I'll ask you a direct question about political will. A UBS private banker laughed at me when I said, is there a serious inquiry here, private banker saying, is there a serious sort of inquiry into where money comes from? Um, London's just been described not too long ago as, as an international money laundering capital. Um, here, what we have here, the explosion of art, Basel, art fairs, galleries going out of the place, all kinds of money coming from China. Uh, Macau, money laundering, it opens, it's an open secret. It's happening. I mean, if it happened, if in London and Switzerland are not really serious, and, well, for the Americans do it, we have to wonder whether there are secondary reasons. Is there a serious political world anywhere, actually? I mean, really, trying to say, let's, let's deal with money laundering, because it's happening everywhere. I was not, I'm sorry, I came a little bit. Oh, what is the question? Sorry. Is there a political will? If, if, if a Swiss banker laughs at me and says it's a serious inquiry um, into where money deposits are coming from, if, if uh, London is describing in what I consider a creditable and reliable media uh, reports as being uh, a, a money lending, money laundering capital, and over here we have, you talk about the art world, well, in, in a few years, five or six years, we, we, we went, from, went from 20 art galleries to 150, 200, and art Basel transferring here. You know, there must be there must be connection between them. But is, is anyone certainly not China going to say, well? Oh, no, uh, in my book. In Switzerland or, or in London? In London. No. Is there a serious political will to tackle this thing? Um. um and it depends. It depends on the case. I could. I had a case that I could see that in London, England, there was um, uh, uh, for for the for the citizens. For, they are they are protecting them and 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 didn't accept even to summon the citizen. The, but depends on the case. But uh, general, broadly speaking. Uh, I can say that uh, you have these problems everywhere, especially in Asia. I know that there is a lot of money laundering here for art. And uh, my book, I mentioned some, some cases involve uh, uh, Asia uh, uh, galleries. And, and that's everywhere you have this. That's why you need to do something. But I don't know if your question I answered. I didn't what about what? Brazil? What do you think of the Brazilian government's attitude to this? Do they have yes, the, I was discussing with... Good question. I was discussing with the director of our FIU, FIU, and the COAF in Brazil. The name is COAF, Financial Intelligence Unit. And he said, oh, at the beginning, the beginning, now he, he changed his mind. But in the beginning, he said, no, it's not important. Artwork's not important. Let's, let's uh, focus on the other sectors because you have much more money laundering. But no, I said to the, him, no, you have big uh, crisis, high, um, high profile cases involving uh, art and uh, nothing's doing. You are not, uh, because uh, the, in Brazil, the, the few has the power to investigate it too. That's a concern that they can investigate and even to punish the, the corporation or the gallery. And they are saying, oh, no, our focus in another sector. I said, no, you need to focus every sector because you are focused just one sector. That's, uh, that's, uh, you need to change our culture, uh, not only to focus on financial, 
uh, it's not anymore financial. Now you see for football. Football is the, the uh, long time it's uh, been uh, a way to money laundering because the same, you know, football churches and the art, you have the, something common. Anonymity, confidentiality, um, self-regulations, FIFA self-regulate football, that's a big problem mm -hmm. because how can they uh, deal with this uh, uh, on behalf of organize, the right of organizing uh, structuring the sport, they do uh, whatever they want. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem. And you need to, to, the state need to force FIFA, FIFA uh, and to give information to the state and not to keep it. Because the FIFA at the beginning wanted all the information come, uh, they proposed to come the information of the negotiation of contracts from clubs and athletes, uh, soccer players, to FIFA, but the information stay stays in FIFA, and FIFA is you know what FIFA is not uh, liable anymore. Huh? Uh, sorry, that's true. Huh? That's true. It's not liable at all. And when you see, I don't know how it was in other countries, but when you see the requirements that they did for Brazil to accept the World Cup, that's unbelievable that our authority accept that. There is even. The obligation for Brazil, there was the obligation. Brazil did uh, the, uh, Brazil accepted, but didn't do at the end. They they forced the uh, that the FIFA authorities had the power to arrest people. Mm. They they said Brazil has to to edict a law that uh, administrative uh, uh, authorities even from FIFA, can arrest people in Brazil. They, uh, Brazil accept this just to, to accept the World Cup. And they said, what is this? This is a complete uh, a breach of our constitutional order. This is unbelievable. And Brazil accept and sign it. Uh, the why government would, signed this. Why did they have that? What, what was the purpose of that? Arrest people for whom, for what? Ah, for commercial, if it violate, if there is violation of commercial rules, because uh, around the state, uh, they can only sell, for instance, beer from one, uh, one specific company. That is a company who negotiated before with FIFA. And you have all the, um, advertisements. And it's, uh, there is a specific for FIFA. And uh, uh, two kilometers around the state, you cannot sell any other beer mm. two kilometers around the state. state. Stadium. Uh, sorry, stadium. You cannot... Uh, uh, all Only products from FIFA. Uh, what is that? <laughs> it's, uh, what? it's uh, another state inside the state. <laughs> Okay, I'm very mindful of the time. We're uh, a little bit over already. Does anyone have any last sort of pressing question or comment that they'd like to make? All right, so if not, then I'm going to bring tonight's really engaging uh, seminar to an end. And uh, on behalf of our two centers, the Center for Comparative and Public Law and the Center for Criminology and the two faculties, Dutch the Sanctus, I'd like to thank you for your extremely interesting presentation tonight. Thank you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. If I can just make a, just a very quick announcement. Obviously, we're all very interested in financial crime and money laundering in this room. Uh, just a quick advertisement. Um, the Center for Comparative and Public Law will be um, organizing a one-day conference on financial crime for Monday, November 23rd. Uh, so you might want to just pencil that down. Uh, the advertisement will go out uh, pretty soon, and we'll have uh, lots of interesting speakers from the UK and Hong Kong uh, on financial crime, money laundering, corruption, etc. Hope to see you there. Thank you very much for coming tonight.